It's been a while since I've done a video, and I figured now is better than ever. I have pretty much the day off, and I had yesterday off and the night before that off, which is not normal, but for some reason I feel more willing to do videos on days that I have like consecutive days off and I don't feel smashed with things that I need to do, um, especially with the new shift that I'm working. I still haven't adjusted completely plus I'm skating a lot now so um it's like an hour and a half trip to get to my closest rink that's actually open and I say this in a lot of my videos when I talk about vacuums and traveling to go see them and going to stores and stuff like that to my closest vacuum store it's about an hour and an extra half an hour beyond that <clears throat> is honestly not that bad um, because it just breezes right on by. Plus the, um, skating sessions are only like an hour to two hours long anyway. I usually only stay for like an hour to an hour and a half. Um, so I leave at like 10 in the morning and I'm typically back by 1230, one o'clock at the latest. So, um, anyway, um, this is a video of my Electrolux Oxygen 3, and it's kind of a one-year update because I have had it for close to a year now, and I picked this up off of eBay new in the box, um, or new old stock, I guess I should say, and new in the box, because these haven't been for sale in years, and they were kind of like a Lowe's exclusive series of vacuums this burnt orange, um, and it's a really nice vacuum cleaner, to be completely honest. It doesn't have the strongest suction, but it's, I would say, around as much as maybe, like, my rainbow or something. It's nothing, like, crazy, and I really like it, to be honest. It does a really great job at grooming the carpets and deep cleaning, and it just seems to, um, really stand the carpet up well and dig and seek between the fibers of the carpet. And it's nice and quiet too. Now I do have a couple complaints. It is a big bulky vacuum and I try to be careful with it because one of the big things that I'd seen on vacuum land when you just randomly search a vacuum cleaner, just try different searches, just put Electrolux Oxygen 3 or Oxygen 3 or Lux um, Upright Vacuum or Electrolux Oxygen Upright or, and all these sorts of things. Um, you'll find a lot of different um, links and stuff through Google. Even go on their shopping section and go into their images because sometimes you'll see images that people took in their house, just like if you were to do it, take a still shot of this right here and I were to post it somewhere and caption or somewhere in that description or anywhere it says Oxygen 3, Electrolux or Vacuum or anything like that, that's a really great way to be able to quickly search things too. Even if you're not looking for a picture, but you're looking for information, pictures can sometimes have tags in them that lead you to more information, which is how I found most of my information on this, with the wheels um, breaking off and having problems and things, and I don't know why this cat loves to be in the videos, but one of the things that I had seen was the wheels like to fall off on this vacuum. Now, if I come over here and I take a um, look at the vacuum and I lean it kind of forward, the wheels do have like a little bit of a wobble to them. But overall, they're not terrible. I'd say that they're pretty decent for the most part. And um, I just don't swing the vacuum around super fast. If I'm going to be changing directions, I typically gradually do it like a K-turn almost in a car or maybe even more than a K-turn, <laughs> what, like an E-turn or something like that, if that even exists. But extra strokes to be able to go around into another direction because, and I also vacuum a little bit slower. Um, not that I feel like it's going to break, but I don't want it to just break out of nowhere. What really made me interested in this machine was semi-locally we had this huge event um, that is this really nice neighborhood where people do a yard sale, um, garage sale sort of event and they bring in um, 
catering trucks and they have little events and stuff, but it's mainly focused around people getting rid of their junk. <laughs> but of course, being in such a nice neighborhood, some people's ideas of junk are another pe person's treasure. I'm a semi-believer in that, but not totally. Um, I definitely have my limits. But I'd seen an Electrolux Aptitude, which was really cool. I liked the handle design on it, and I think it's a little bit more durable, which was the um, model um, before this one. And this is just like a semi-upgraded version. I don't think that the aptitude, it didn't. It didn't have the electronic height adjustment, and I don't think that it had as nice of a headlight on it, if it had a headlight at all. Um, but it was the same color scheme, same general design and shape, but it didn't have as much gray on it. Um, but it is a really cool machine, and I kind of feel like it's a little... Um, more towards collectors, if anything, mainly because, like I said, this vacuum, you can't go out and buy it anymore. And when it was available, it was five, six hundred dollars. It was very expensive. And I can see why people got upset when it would break or it would have problems or the wheels were falling off. You know, that's not something that's an easy fix. That's kind of like a termination point at that, um, you know, life of the vacuum. So that's a lot of money to be spending on something that's not going to last as long. Plus, it's heavy, but again, I think that this was made and geared in an era where vacuums tended to be heavier. In the last seven years or so, I would say vacuums have been really focused towards being lightweight, whereas I don't always contribute lightweight and functionality to better cleaning. Sometimes it exists and sometimes it doesn't. So I think there's a right time and place for vacuums. And to me, this was just made well. Um, I, um, not so much the quality of the wheels, but everything else seems to be good. Um, the bag could be a little bit bigger. Because of that um, hidden tool storage, the bag chamber for the vacuum is relatively small. You can see this actually has a, quite a bit of dust and dirt in it. I hope I didn't pop the bag off the... No, I didn't. Not all the way. It went back on. Um, I don't know what it is with my camera being so blurry on my phone, but um, the bag chamber is very narrow. Um, it only starts about like right here. So most of the bag sticks out um, of the bag chamber until you put the door on. And you can see these paper bags don't do the greatest job filtering. And then there's the HEPA filter, which is universal across all these um, Electrolux made by Eureka models. And I also think that this was made during a time where a lot of these Electrolux branded vacuums were definitely um, geared towards people who were not familiar with the fact that Electrolux was no longer being made by the heiress that we know today. Um, this is made by Eureka. And I'm sure a lot of people were disappointed, which probably gave Electrolux a bad name. They didn't really put their best foot forward out there. However, I think that the Eureka model Electrolux canisters are actually not half bad, especially considering there aren't a lot of mainstream vacuum cleaner brands that make central vacuums. Eureka being one of the few um, making their Electrolux and their Eureka Zoom um, central vacuums, and they had been making them for for a couple decades prior to that, that were even metal bodied. Um, Hoover made a few. Dyson's never made one. Shark's never made one. Bissell's never made a central vacuum. That Garage Pro does not count. Um, and that's about it, I guess, that I, all I can think of. So in a way, Eureka's really branched out in a lot more different categories, but one thing that you almost never see from them is carpet shampooers or carpet extractors. They did make the Eureka Atlantis years ago, but that was about it. Um, so they kind of have their hands in a few different pots than from other brands out there. Um, but the most that I can say about this is I have not used this vacuum cleaner very much. It's just because, um, it is a little bit more uh, challenging to use because the or the cord is a lot shorter. It's retractable, so that's already going to limit its use. 
Plus, the location is, like, in the wheel chamber. Um, so that's not the greatest design, if you ask me. Some may disagree, but I don't see how you could. <laughs> um, so we'll give it a quick run. And hopefully my phone doesn't fall um, forward again like it did the last time. And I don't really like the cord location on this vacuum. It's right here on the back at the bottom, which means that it tends to run the cord over unless you're holding it straight up like this. If you have it even leaning back just a little at an angle, it will run its cord over with the wheel and it'll get stuck. And I don't really care for that. And for some reason, these prongs on this cord bend a lot more than other vacuum cleaners that I've used in the past. And one thing that I noticed from just following a vacuum cleaner store on YouTube was I never realized how well-built Mila um, prongs are on their cords. They are really well-made. Um, they don't bend at all. So... I very rarely adjust the height on this. I usually keep it as low as possible because the weight of the vacuum just carries itself pretty well and I think that it cleans um, its best on low um, pile setting. So like I said, it's very quiet. Very nice, silent design in the brush roll sounds nice and quiet, very similar to um, the deep clean power nozzle and the quiet clean power nozzle on um, the Electrolux canisters. and it locks into its upright position very nicely. Um, the bag stinks because the bag is almost virtually useless, but you can see the really nice carpet lines that this leaves, and I'll go and stand in the opposite direction. You can see they're really deep edges, and it sounds silly. Most people who um, are watching this are going to be collectors, so they can relate a little bit more than... Some people who would be watching this that were just kind of like looking for the vacuum because they were going to buy one. Not really the case with this one because you can't buy one. And if I were someone, unless this was in really good condition, I probably wouldn't buy it myself because you don't know how it was taken care of. It's very few and far between when you find someone who isn't a vacuum collector or enthusiast or someone along those lines that just takes care of a vacuum cleaner. My grandparents being one of the select few, but that's because they had a rainbow for 30 years and they want to get that use out of their vacuum that they have now on their budget. So um, they happen to take care of it a little bit more than others. The hose suction's really um, good on it. It's not really great, but it's, it's good. And the tools, even though you'd think that this little compartment would be... Um, almost useless. The extension wand and crevice tool are behind the hose, but the tools are relatively full size, and I like that. So that's that's a nice feature. You can also remove this door to be able to unclog it if it is clogged for some reason. And you can see there's a floor and hose selector here on the back, which was a Eureka Electrolux, but more geared towards Eureka thing um, from years past ago. They don't really do it. Well, they do on their air speeds. Um, and then here is a cord hook, which I don't use cord hooks, but this is one machine that I would never use it on because the cord is short enough as it is. I can't give up two and a half feet. Um, plus, I already hold the cord in my hand anyway, so what's the point in using a cord hook if you're getting the cord out of the way in the first place? So, um, otherwise... Really nice machine that I do trust that it's cleaning well. Suction, like I said, it's it's good. Not great, but it's good. So the grooming is what helps to compensate for it. And the weight of the vacuum really helps it dig, to me, a little deeper and groom a little better 
than the um, power nozzles made by Electrolux, so, or Eureka Lux. But otherwise, um, if you guys have any questions or comments or anything that you guys may know about this machine or always been curious about it, it is more of a style vacuum, and it's kind of, to me, with the mesh grill on the front of it, is very vintage looking, where they tried to blend vintage into a modern style. So it's more geared towards style, and it wouldn't surprise me if they had named it something, kind of like how car companies name their current outgoing style of their fleet of vehicles, like something catchy. It wouldn't surprise me if they had like a design name as to what they called this style vacuum cleaner, because they definitely put extra time and effort into designing this compared to some other vacuum cleaners out on the market, and even at this time. And one of the few that I think cleaned well for that time where in the early 2000s, people were wearing and you know, like crazy stuff with weird colors. And it was a weird design time in my eyes. This was still a functional vacuum. So thank you for watching and please like, comment and subscribe.